it's a good story because Bruce Lloyd was a friend of mine and a guy I really respected. He was a gentleman in harness racing. And he passed away. He bred the horse and passed away before it was sold. And I sort of went down to see him at the stables at the sales because I thought he was way down the back. And I thought not many people would have gone to see him. I wanted to say hello to Mrs. Lloyd. And I got down there and he came out of the box and I was like, oh, I don't mind you, son. And I sort of, I promised Amanda I wouldn't buy a horse uh, that week at the sales and she fell in love with him. So we bid on him and we got him. And I said to Mrs. Lloyd, if we ever win a race, I'll give you a, an extra little bonus because, uh, you know, Bruce was such a good guy and I was so sad to hear of him passing. The fact that it's turned out nicely for us is one of those really nice bonuses you have in my career. It was quite late in the day and I just happened to be sitting outside with a couple of the South Island boys actually just having a beer catching up about the day and Mick tapped me on the shoulder and said mate come have a look at this horse in the ring um, and it was this horse and he just said to me what do you think and I said well he looks okay Mick but um, I haven't really seen him and he said good as gold I'll, I'll go and do the rest and he came back five minutes later and said I bought that horse and he's on his way to your place. Kratos. Michael goes along to the sales, buys a horse out of uh, Hanover the Gold, of the Lloyds, and says to you, I think you should get involved. He did, um, and I think, uh, I think his wife might have picked it, actually, but uh, she claims it anyway. <laughs> but uh, to be fair, um, it's an easy gig for me. I just say yes and pay, pay my share of the bills, and that's pretty much my contribution to the horse, So um, with most of them, to be fair. so uh, And I quite like it that way. I don't have to get mixed up with uh, any discussions. I just turn up on the day and uh, have a bit of fun. Barry, this horse means a little bit more though because a significant moment in your life, uh, a life-threatening moment where you were diagnosed with cancer and this horse has helped, I suppose, recuperate you. Well, uh, in some respects, I suppose, it's been a great bonding uh, story for Michael and I. We, we've always been uh, uh, good mates and uh, I think when I, when I was sick, uh, Michael put his hand up on the first day and said, look, don't worry about it, I'll, uh, I'll give you my kidney. And uh, he, was, uh, he stayed on that course the whole time, so it wasn't until probably seven or years later um, that he, we actually had the operation, and that went really well. Uh, he's given me a great kidney, and it, um, it's working, working a treat at the moment. Uh, not sure I would have wanted his liver, to be fair, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, his kidney, no, kidney's working very well, and um, it's nice to have uh, a horse that we, um, we bond over as well, which is good fun. When Barry got sick, um, he rang me and said, oh, I've got kidney cancer. And I said, well, it's no stress. I was actually at the airport. I said, I'll give you one of mine. And it, you never think about it. And people quite often try and pretend, Greg, that it's a tough decision or, you know, it's a big deal. But it's not really. You know, you've got kids or Karen. You'd do exactly the same. And anybody would. The same year we had the kidney transplant, we lost our other brother, Lyndon, who we called Bob. And when someone you love dies, you automatically think, I wish there's something I could do. And in a situation where you can give somebody a kidney, it's actually something you can do. So it's a real gift to have that opportunity because so many people feel helpless when people they love are sick or dying. And yet in a situation like this, you can do something. So it wasn't a case of me giving Barry a gift. It was being given the gift of being able to help. Really nice thing to do. And, and look, I was hoping it might make Baz a bit more arrogant and a bit more vain, but it hasn't seemed to work. He's still got the same beard and he's still not very arrogant, Greg. So he, he didn't get many of the personal traits when he got the kidney well. bills. Kratos by two, Molly Bones, great fantasy. Stowe's about to rush late, 50 to go. Kratos, Molly Bones rushing late. Kratos does it well. Kratos from... Given what the Guerin family have been through with Barry's illness, this horse has clearly played a part in his recovery. Well, I'd, I'd like to think so, Greg, yeah, but um, as I say, every time they come to the races, they're always full of hope, and when he gets beat, they're very, very good losers, both Mick and Barry and Amanda, they're terrific, terrific losers, which I find today is a really big plus with owners because no one likes getting beat, we don't like getting beat, but they take it in their stride and then they just say, they bounce back off it and say, where are we going next? What about this horse, Kratos? He's won three races now, some pretty big thrills for you boys, and uh, now he's making his way to the Harness Jewels, which is our grand final day. Yeah, it's great actually, because he's uh, provided us with a lot of fun. He thinks he's won three races out of about 10 or 11, so that's pretty good going uh, for a three-year-old trotter. Um, whether he's good enough to match it with this class, not too sure. It doesn't really matter anyway at the end of the day. It's more about uh, getting to the big day and uh, watching your horse race, as racing's about, and making sure you have a good night out the night uh, of the big day. So we'll, we'll make sure we do that, but right anyway.
it's a bit of fun. It's just a distraction, Greg. I think for everybody who owns a horse, it's a distraction from your normal life. And you know, Baz has been great. He never talks about himself as being a cancer survivor. He said, I had cancer, I don't anymore. He's got a new kidney. We were always close, but we're probably closer now because it's an unusual experience. But for anybody out there who ever ends up in the situation where you are in that donor position, there's honestly nothing to be scared of, Greg. I was out of hospital after two days, as you know. It's not paying for it. All the doctors and nurses are so good at what they do. It really is very uninvasive. So if anybody out there ever has that sort of opportunity in their life, I would say take it. And if you ever wanted to talk to me about it on a more personal level about what it's all like, I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody because it's a wonderful experience to go through um, from the donor's side of things. And it ain't just you boys either. Your family, you're what, from 10 or 11, so the wider family is quite wide. Uh, yeah, it's a big family, right? Uh, good Catholic uh, stock, so uh, seven sisters and, uh, and then me and then three brothers. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to have a, come from a big family and um, I think, um, you know, we're very lucky. I've, I've had a lucky life and, uh, you know, um, Michael giving me a kidney, I suppose, is another reason that I am lucky. So, um, yeah, I feel pretty blessed, to be fair.